Next to the Staples Center, where the Lakers, Clippers, and Kings compete, is the Los Angeles Convention Center, where each year, the auto industry gathers for its own high-stakes competition. The competition of winning brand loyalty and the desire to influence your next car, truck, or SUV purchase. Over the next hour, we'll show you all of the latest new cars being introduced here and how the new technology features affect you and those around you. So whether you're serious about cars or curious, what will be rolling down tomorrow's roads, sit back, buckle up, and hang on as Fox Sports takes you on a ride around the LA Auto Show like you've never seen. Welcome to the LA Auto Show. Hello everybody, I'm Tor Dietrich. Well, as one of the elite auto shows of the world, all the top executives are here. There's literally one million square feet of floor space, 1,000 cars on display, and 60 new car debuts to impress the thousands of press and the hundreds of thousands of new car buyers expected through the turnstiles. And we have you covered with our Fox Sports Auto Show team, Nick Miles and Mike Caudill, to show you all the new metal and give you some perspective. But we begin our journey with performance, performance of a different kind. Here with the story is Nick. A lot of attention here in the BMW youth. Big crowds of journalists, executives, and people looking at this. This is the brand new BMW iNext, and the iNext is the future of BMW's transportation. They're going to have 25 electrified vehicles by 2025, and this is one of the first stages. So why is this vehicle important? Because it's all electric, it's fully autonomous, and it's actually going to come to market in some form by 2021. It's a big statement in terms of uh, technology. Our engineers are working very hard on the electric drive, on autonomous drive. And the design team, of course, is tasked to make that look desirable, to make that look so good that all our customers would love to have it sooner than later. Take a look at the vehicle from front to back. It still has the kidney-shaped grille that we know from BMW, but there's some enhancements. The color on the whole vehicle changes from front to back. It's a copper-colored rose that goes into gray. The vehicle on the inside looks very much like your own living room. It's wood, it's cloth, a big couch up back, and styled captain chairs up front big screens on the inside and that steering wheel folds away into the dash when you hit the BMW button as well as the pedals fold into the wooden floor. Then the vehicle is in full autonomous mode. The other cool things on the inside is the cloth and the surfaces. You can draw on them with your finger. When you draw on them, it watches what you draw, it lights up the path of your finger, and if you draw a treble clef, for instance, it will then understand that you want to hear music. The vehicle is the state of transportation of the future. Even down to the fact it doesn't even have mirrors or door handles, those things are replaced by wafting your fingers over the outside to unlock it, and the mirrors are replaced by cameras. Big 24-inch wheels finish off the outside. And with more sports cars, here's Mike. Hey, BMW, what year did you land here in the United States and sell your first vehicle? Or how many vehicles have you sold of the 3 Series here in the United States? Well, it's called the Intelligent Personal Assistant, and it's all new on this BMW 340i. It basically is like Surrey for the iPhone. You just ask it a question, it'll tell you the answer. All right, let's talk about this vehicle right here because it's making its debut, and it's the M340i. It's a cross between a 3 Series and an M3, which is all about performance. It's the first addition to our 3 Series lineup of an M performance model. It's a 382 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. It's a phenomenal car to drive. Everything on the vehicle has been tuned by M. It's been made a little more aggressive, the steering more direct, the aero kit on the body, as well as a unique kidney grill. It's kind of blacked out and it has a unique design. The interior refinements have some of the M enhancement to it. You have an M Sport steering wheel that's standard. You have M accents throughout. You also have the wheels, which are M styled, so they're slightly more aggressive. The BMW 340i is synonymous with all-out performance, like track performance. And if you're going to talk about performance within the German brands, you have to talk about this vehicle here launched at the LA Auto Show. It's the all-new Audi e-tron GT, GT obviously standing for Gran Turismo. Now let's talk about what's under the hood. 
it doesn't have anything under the hood because it's electrified. 434 kilowatts of power, which is the equivalent of 590 horsepower like a traditional gas motor vehicle. A zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. And to charge it, you'll be able to charge this vehicle up to 80% in less than an hour. This is meant to be a high performance uh, vehicle. It is an Audi when it comes to the suspension, the infotainment, the driver assistance, but it's a high performance Gran Turismo, really kind of a halo for the brand, showing the electric mobility of the future, along with a lot of beautiful design and performance. In addition to the debut of the e-tron GT, we also have our e-tron Quattro SUV. It's meant to have all the cargo capacity and everyday usability that you'd expect. 95 kilowatt battery and that's really meant to be an electric SUV that's in the heart of the SUV market. So a couple of very exciting electric vehicles. Coming up I'll show you two new products that are well shocking and Jeep has a new truck. Say what? Yep a new truck. Plus Nick has been scoping out new electric cars. It's all coming to you as Fox Sports presents the LA Auto Show. Welcome back to Fox Sports coverage of the LA Auto Show. Well, there's a new automaker on the show floor here. It's called Rivian. And here to tell us more about their new SUV and pickup is RJ Skariz, their CEO and founder. Okay, RJ, tell us about the pickup first. So it's a vehicle that delivers incredible performance on-road, incredible performance off-road, has tons of utility. It's efficient, it can go long distances. We have a front trunk, it's 330 liters of storage. So when I say big, you can fit a full-size cooler and a full-size suitcase. In the case of the pickup, we have a gear tunnel that goes straight through the side of the vehicle. It packages all these things that normally don't go into the vehicle. The interior has to be usable. It, it needs to be something we want to be premium, but at the same time, you can get it dirty. It tows 11,000 pounds. I mean, that's a lot of weight. Are you expecting this to be used as a weekend vehicle to maybe pull a boat? This is something you'd use every day to pick the kids up from soccer practice or to go on the weekend with a mountain bike to take the family to the beach. It can be used for all these different, what we think of as life's adventures. As an electric vehicle, you don't have to package and make the car look that way to be a truck, but you did it for a reason. So we wanted to leave the front portion of the vehicle to provide for a lot of storage, but that same area acts as energy absorption, so it's a very safe vehicle. This is a five-star vehicle in all categories. It'll be the safest truck in the market. You have an SUV, seven passenger. Yep. Tell us about the interior on this. So it's a very comfortable seven passenger setup. So three rows in the, in the second and third row both fold flat, and it gives you tons of storage for all your gear. Okay, now the exterior. So we wanted to make sure the surfacing was, was simultaneously something that communicated a level of strength and robustness, but still had a degree of sophistication and intelligence to it. And we coupled that surfacing with a really unique front end. The headlights have a unique form, we call it a stadium form, and they're flanked by this cross-car daytime running light, which gives the vehicle a really nice sense of position. The styling is outstanding on both vehicles, but I think the underpinnings with the powertrain is just as significant. So we have a skateboard architecture with a large battery that sits in the middle of the vehicle. It gives us great weight distribution, all the weights carried low and in the center of the vehicle. And at the ends, we have four motors, two motors per axle. And what that allows us to do is to control the torque very precisely at each wheel. So it gives you a level of agility and stability that we've never seen before. Are these the actual products? Yeah, this is fully representative of what we'll be going to production with. There you have it, the Rivian SUV and the truck, both electric. Now, if you're looking for a new Soul, there are three kinds of Soul available at the LA Auto Show. Starting off and continuing our theme of electrics, this is the brand new Kia Soul EV. Now, we don't know much about it. We do know it'll have a brand new battery. We do know it'll have an extended range. And because of that new chassis, it'll have a lot more room than the previous version. What we've done here is we've taken a, a all new chassis and we've got independent rear suspension which allows a much bigger battery pack. Electrification is here. You're having people that can actually live normal lives and not worry about charging up every other day. Kia are proud of the fact that they have the third generation Soul in America in three different flavors. 
The flavor that saves the environment is good for city driving. The flavor in the GT Soul, which goes like hell, 201 horsepower, while still maintaining that extra space of the new chassis and the Souls well known for family comfort and ride. 201 horsepower, seven speed dual clutch transmission with paddle shifters, super cool LED lights. And in the middle, the brand new X-Line. This is a vehicle that's built for adventure. It can both go fast in the city and can off-road, allowing you to take your family to places you've never been before. The Kia Soul in three different flavors at this year's LA show. Do you like snowboards and mountains? Well, I definitely do. And until now, you've had to use a very capable big SUV to go up to the mountains to have winter fun sports activities. Well, Toyota are changing that. You'll recognize this as a Toyota Prius. And for the first time ever, Toyota are adding all wheel drive into their Prius to make this a much more capable adventure vehicle. It's going to allow customers to be more confident in, in driving a Prius, especially in some inclement weather. It's going to add to the overall safety feeling of the vehicle, and it'll add to the utility of it. It's just going to be an improved drive and ride. Being able to add that capability into the success of Prius really going to help the appeal to a broader range of customers. Now currently they sell 58,000 Toyota Priuses every single year and adding in that all-wheel drive unit is going to make them sell even more. You can go out into the environment, you can play with your Toyota Prius all-wheel drive and you can know that you're driving the most fuel-efficient all-wheel drive hybrid in North America. There's nothing better than an old school media scrum at an auto show and this is evidence of it right now here at the Hyundai booth at the LA Auto Show. Now this is their new flagship sport utility vehicle. It's called the Halisade. It is an eight person mid-size sport utility vehicle. Under the hood is a 3.8 liter V6 motor pushing out plenty enough horsepower for the family. On the interior, six USB ports, full reclining seats on the front and second row, but one of my favorites is the third row where the seats recline as well fitting plenty of adults inside this vehicle. It means an awful lot to the brand and it's more than just the volume. Of course everybody loves that it's going to bring new buyers to our company, but it's actually filling out our SUV lineup. So when people see a picture now of the end of all of our ads, but see six big grills staring at them, they go, Hyundai is an SUV company. And that's of course where the industry's moving and we've been needing a vehicle like this to help fill out that line. All right, little known fact, the crossover segment was created in 2002 by this company, Nissan, and this is the all new Murano. Refined exterior, refined interior, but it's also about protecting your family as well with something called Nissan 360. I'm not gonna finish telling you what it's all about. This guy is Dave Brissick right here, senior group manager for Nissan North America. My friend, tell me about how proud you are of this vehicle and what's this technology I'm learning about? It's called Safety Shield 360 and I'll tell you, it protects the occupants from the front, the rear, and the side. One of my favorite ones also is that traffic sign recognition. What that does basically, is you're driving on a road that you've never been on before, it's showing 55 miles an hour, it'll display on the center console so the driver knows how fast you're going. With the exterior design, start with new LED headlights and tail lights. You'll also see 18 inch and 20 inch aluminum alloy wheels. From the front, you'll see new exterior trim level. From the rear, you'll see an exciting new rear to the vehicle as well. Nissan also incorporating their rear door alert, which is standard on all models, so if you forget someone or something in the back of the vehicle, it will alert you as well. Under the hood is a 260 horsepower, 3.5 liter dual overhead cam V6. And on the interior, you can expect to see an eight inch color display with multi-touch control. All right, I wanted to get a closer look at the interior and this thing is super luxurious and incredibly refined. This vehicle, the Nissan Murano, will be going on sale in 2019. When we come back, we'll show you luxury SUVs, including this Lincoln Aviator Hybrid. Plus, Nick goes off-roading in a Lamborghini, while Mike has found some affordable performance. It's all coming to you as Fox Sports presents the LA Auto Show. Please stay with us. Welcome back. 
Well, not all Car of the Year awards are the same. Case in point, Motor Trends Car of the Year award. It was started in 1949. That makes it the longest running Car of the Year award. So it's only fitting that the 70th anniversary goes with the Genesis G70 Motor Trends 2019 Car of the Year Award. Irvin Raphael from Genesis, here to talk to us more about it. Irvin, congratulations. Thank you so much. We are honored, we're humbled. This is a great recognition. It's a great award, but you won it for a good reason, okay? You have outstanding styling both inside and out. People love the profile. If you just look at the car, it's absolutely gorgeous, and it has a perfect stance. And then the quad headlamps. New in the industry, we use it in the front and the rear. It's something that's special for Genesis. Let's talk about the interior, because the interior, I think, is probably what put you over the edge. The interior is amazing. When you look at the quilted seats, the attention to detail, the feel, the touch of the materials. 99% of our cars are connected. You can do everything you need from the vehicle, including not just your phone, but other well-known apps like the Amazon Echo or Google Home. Well, there you go. Motor Trends 2019 Car of the Year Award goes to the Genesis G70. All right, guys, we are calling this track-inspired DNA. It's not about normal pedestrian vehicles. It's about vehicles like this right here. It's where automakers take performance race cars like this ARX by Acura. This is the 05, built by Team Penske. It's a Daytona car that's been proven on the track. So what do they do? They put it on the track and they say, no, you know what? We're gonna build this vehicle right here. What is this one? It's an NSX GT3 with carbon fiber on the entire exterior of this vehicle. Starting price, $569,000, but that's really for a race car. So then what do they do? They say, you know what? We're gonna take it from the track and we're gonna move right over here to the actual production version that consumers can buy in the marketplace. It's stunning and beautiful. It's got carbon fiber accents. It's the Acura NSX. So what does that mean? It means 573 horsepower and a zero to 60 time in less time than it takes you to put on your seatbelt. What does that mean? Less than three seconds. So hold your horses with this vehicle. Let's go take a look at something that might be a little bit more lime green or lemon yellow. Nobody likes lemons, but everybody loves bananas. Why? Because they're sweet, and the sweet design of this Lexus LC500 makes it a standout here at the LA Auto Show. Now, under the hood, yeah, 4.40 to 60 time. 471 horsepower, starting price around $92,000. And compared to that Acura NSX, that one starts at about $160,000. But this vehicle right here, if we stay on the citrus theme with that lime on the side, this is the Mercedes-Benz GTR Pro. I love the exterior design of this. Track-inspired V8 by turbo. Everything about this car screams one thing, carbon fiber. You can see it all the way around this vehicle it is one of the best cars here at the auto show zero to 60 time right around three seconds this thing is a fire breathing dragon price they're not going to announce it until later next year now I am definitely into luxury and Mike may not be and that's why I'm here in the Lincoln booth. They have my phone as a key on the brand new Lincoln Aviator. So I'm within about three meters of this vehicle and it's already recognized my phone. If I want to walk up to it and get in, check it out, all I have to do is touch the door handle and it unlocks. This vehicle is easy to get in and out of but I know what you're thinking. What happens suddenly if your phone goes dead and you can't get into the vehicle? Well. A nice little keypad here on the side allows you to put in a code to get into the vehicle. If you have a valet and you want to send him the code, send it right to his phone and he can get in the vehicle. Now this new aviator will also come in a plug-in hybrid version. So you'll be able to power it up on electricity and do a certain amount of miles on electricity alone. There's a camera embedded just by the mirror there that scans the road ahead of you. If it sees a pothole, it will adjust the suspension so you hardly feel that pothole at all. What's important for us is it's built on an all new rear wheel drive architecture, which enables great proportions from a design perspective, tremendous weight balance, which is really helpful from a vehicle dynamics standpoint. On the inside, the luxury continues. Once you get in, this vehicle actually has the sounds on the inside recorded by the Detroit Symphony. And just to make that luxury experience go all the way, it has an automatic parking button. Just press it, it'll find a parking space, and without you touching the steering wheel, the brake, or shifting gears whatsoever, this vehicle will park itself. 
Now to say a vehicle is taller than me is no stretch of the imagination. This BMW X7 is almost a foot taller than I am. It's the largest BMW SUV that they have ever made. And the X7 joins the BMW lineup with three rows. Now the X5 did have three rows, but this X7 now gives the option of captain's chairs and more space in that third row. But it gives you so much more than that. It gives you air suspension. The vehicle can get down low and go fast and also has rear wheel steering, which means a large, what would have been a truck framed base in the past vehicle actually handles much more like a nimble sports car. On the inside, a full gamut of entertainment features and safety features. In fact, this vehicle monitors your driving habits and will allow you to stay in the lines on the road. There's some highly advanced technological features that save on fuel. The stop start system, which can be annoying in some cars, will only engage if you're at stop for a long time. A big family SUV coming to market this year that allows you to have it on the weekend for adventures and the weekday to do all your family errands and maybe a little speed on the freeway. Up next, we go down and dirty with the new Jeep truck, the Gladiator. And the future for autonomous cars isn't what you think. Stay with us. Well, welcome back to Fox Sports coverage of the LA Auto Show. The excitement you see behind me is for the new Jeep Gladiator. It's a new truck, and here to tell us about it is Tim Kaniskas, the new president for Jeep. Now, Tim, I wouldn't be right if I didn't give you a congratulations also for winning SUV of the Year for the Wrangler. Yeah, it's been a good week. Monday night, we won SUV of the Year for Wrangler, which, you know, is very significant because a lot of people look at Wrangler and they think it's an off-road capable vehicle only. But SUV of the Year says, you know what, it can do that and it is everyday drivable and perfect for you. And then, two days later, we come at the Gladiator. People have been asking us for this truck for years. Forever. Yeah. Since 92, I would yeah. think. A lot of people don't realize it, but Gladiator is actually a heritage name. We had a Gladiator truck previously, and it was very important for us to call this the Gladiator. And the reason is the Gladiator was a dedicated pickup truck, and this is a dedicated pickup truck. This is not a Wrangler with a bed. This was designed from the ground up to be a truck. What is it about the Gladiator that you want folks to know so they understand this product? The, the Gladiator is going to be a really unique product in the segment because Gladiator is going to take everything that you know about the psychological profile of somebody who wants a Wrangler. If you take that same person and you say, how can I help enable your lifestyle? If you're into mountain biking or dirt biking or side-by-sides or surfing, we can now help you with that instead of having a trailer. You can put the windshield down, you can take the doors off, you can take the roof off in a truck. So we call this the and. It's the Wrangler lifestyle and the ability to enable that. All right, well, there you have it, the all-new Jeep Gladiator. Can't wait to see it on the streets. So you don't have to have a big, beefy SUV if you want all-wheel drive. The famous Fiat 500X, based on the original 500, it gets a refresh at this year's LA Auto Show. Peter Hogelveen is here from FCA. Tell us what you did to this vehicle. Thanks, Dick. Yeah, we made a, a couple of enhancements on the exterior design. It's got a new front fascia with new LED headlamps, LED daytime running lights as well. On the rear end of the vehicle, we added LED tail lamps as well, with obviously our signature body color insert, which we come to recognize from the 124 Spider. It has standard all-wheel drive system as well. But I think the big news what we really got to talk about is the engine. We've got an all-new 1.3 liter turbo engine in this car. It delivers 177 horsepower. It's also best in class, 210 pound-feet of torque. It sticks with the fun to drive that people come to know about Fiat. All right, so not only on the outside and the engine gets a refresh, but you did a little bit on the inside to make this vehicle uh, super duper for 2019. We have new interior fabric starting with the entry model on the pop, and we got a seven inch touchscreen radio. And the great thing about this vehicle is, even with all of those systems, the all wheel drive, you're still getting 29 miles a gallon on the highway, which is pretty good for a vehicle that has all wheel drive. We're in the midst of an automotive revolution. It's all about autonomous vehicles that can seamlessly drive themselves, and it's all about electrification as well. But what if you don't want electrification? What if you don't want autonomy? Take a look at this right here. This is the Toyota Avalon, and here's what's special. It's the first time it's wearing the coveted TRD badge, which it stands for Toyota Racing Development. You'll get a full exterior ground effects package on this vehicle with 20-inch alloy wheels that give an aggressive and pronounced look. On the interior, double-stitched seats that firmly keep you planted when you're out on the street. 
or even, dare I say it, want to take it out on the racetrack. Don't want the Avalon? What about this right here? It's the Toyota Camry, also wearing the coveted TRD badge. So let's talk about what's under the hood with both of them. 3.5 liter V6 pumping out more than 300 horsepower and a zero to 60 time? Yeah, in less than six seconds. And I said that with a Camry. Same thing with this vehicle as well. You'll get the ground effects package, you get a black top on it, the spoiler on the rear and 20 inch wheels. We're so excited about the sedans, the Camry and Avalon. The performance is so much better than it used to be and we really wanted to express ourselves, listen to our customers, listen to our dealers, really kind of enjoy that passion of driving. Although pricing hasn't been announced yet on either of these TRD products, starting price for a Camry is in the mid $20,000 range and the Avalon in the mid $30,000 range. So expect to add just a little bit more to get into one of these TRD packages. I'm joined now by Dan Monk from Nissan to talk about the all new Maxima. So Dan, tell us about the new product. Oh, it's great. So Maxima, this new Maxima, we have a refreshed exterior, front, a rear, it's got 350 horsepower, and the driving dynamics of this vehicle is awesome. So it's really positioned much differently than a CUV, and there's still that performance-minded person out there. Okay, I want to talk interior refinement. So we're offering a Platinum Reserve package with a leather package that really mimics our GTR interior package. And the real story is around our Nissan Intelligent Mobility and bringing technology in the vehicle. We have Safety Shield 360 on this vehicle, which is active safety shield in the front, side, and rear of the vehicle, and intelligent lane intervention. If you stray out of the lane, it'll pull you back in. These are standard on the product? It's available throughout the product at certain grade levels on up, but we're bringing it across our portfolio. This is a flagship vehicle for us, and so we want to offer that luxury experience at Nissan Value. Well, there you have it, the new 2019 Nissan Maxima. Now, one thing we like to see is world premieres at auto shows, and LA didn't disappoint. There is a brand new Porsche 911 at this show. The internal number for this car is the 992, and it replaces the 991. Unmistakably, from the outside, this is a Porsche, but more muscular and fresher for 2019. But what you can't see from the outside is all the new tech on the inside. Some of that technology on the inside includes a brand new 10.9 inch touch screen. Also, the navigation system uses swarm data. That means multiple sources contribute to knowing where the car is going to go. And for the first time ever in any vehicle in the world, this vehicle, the new 911, gets wet mode. The car can sense when the road is wet and prepare for slippery surfaces. We're looking for an overall package of performance, of everyday usability, of driving enjoyment, and also now with the increasing digital world of convenience, you want to make sure it's unmistakably a 911. And that's a huge challenge because uh, this is a design that's been carrying through now for 55 years and is not just the design language that is influencing every 911, but also influencing all of our other cars. And all of that has to come together in equally compelling parts to enthuse and satisfy our very demanding but also very passionate and loyal customers. So they have tablets on the wall here where you can actually build your 911. I went ahead and did that. Now all I have to do is find myself $120,000. Coming up, we saw the X7, the iNext, and the M340i from BMW, but the German brand has one more car up its sleeve. Plus, Nick goes on a joyride in a Lamborghini. It's all coming to you as Fox Sports presents the LA Auto Show. Welcome back. Well, BMW waited 20 years to bring back the 8 Series. This beloved coupe boasts some 523 horsepower and goes 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds, but it also parks itself with either this, the coupe, or the convertible M850i. This is the rebirth of an icon. Uh, this is the all new M850i X Drive Coupe. Cars in general haven't done as well. What is BMW hoping for in bringing back an iconic A-Series? We thought we'd bring back the A-Series to really deliver on a sporty drive as well as a luxury experience. This is not battery operated. It's not a hybrid. It's turbocharged, 523 horses in the M. That's a lot of power. And a few years ago, you couldn't even find that in 
most of the sports cars. I mean, this is a beast. There is an appetite for these types of vehicles. Certainly for those customers who really want a sporty driving experience, we have that. The nice thing is, is that we have a breadth of product to satisfy a wide variety of customer tastes. All right, now talk to me about the interior. So the first thing you'll recognize as soon as you open the door is the familiar driver-oriented cockpit. Every design line inside the vehicle seems to be moving forward in a very dynamic way. And customers will also notice how luxurious the materials are. We use a very high quality leather and we have a lot of technology in the car that customers in this segment, they expect to see. Well, BMW has gone old school for some new car buyers. Look for the all new BMW 8 Series. Trivia question for you. What is the largest growing segment within the auto industry right now? Well, I can tell you what it is not, and it's not passenger cars. It's actually sport utility vehicles and trucks. I'm here in the Ford Motor Company truck booth at the LA Auto Show, and it's all about sport utility vehicles and trucks, and we're calling this the vanishing car segment. Why? Because it's not just Ford, it's other automakers as well. We went to Ford directly to find out why they're moving away from vehicles like the C-Max and Fusion and into vehicles like the Ford Ranger and the Ford F-150. It's only here in the U.S. Again, we're responding to customer taste, so there's still customers in both in Europe and China that are looking for cars, and we're going to continue to deliver those. So in my pursuit of the vanishing car, I stopped over here at Honda, right? So we started at Ford talking about how they're eliminating their passenger cars. Well, Honda's not eliminating their passenger cars, but this is a vehicle that hasn't been on the market in 16 years. It's the Honda Passport. So let's talk about this vehicle for a second. It's a five passenger mid-size sport utility vehicle with a 3.5 liter V6 under the hood pumping out 280 horsepower. I love the exterior design of this vehicle. Maybe for the millennial or young family, this vehicle is gonna get you up into the mountains with its 20 inch wheels on it. Nice aggressive look, but don't forget about safety as well inside this vehicle. A lot of great news here with Honda and the Passport. Over to you, Nick. Thanks, Mike. We're at the West Hall entrance, and there is a lot of cars laid out in front of us, an ever-evolving landscape of new cars, trucks, and SUVs, but a lot of those are becoming electric. There's new companies, there's old companies with new tricks. So much information, I don't know everything, so I brought in an expert who does, Anton Wallman, independent investor and analyst. Anton, let's walk the floor and tell us a little bit about the evolving electrics in automotive, because you just have to look at the internet or Twitter, and every day there seems to be some new major piece of news. That's right, so in such a big change in automotive history, we see new companies that have not yet existed in the past that have come out with new concepts, new show cars, and they're looking to bring these cars to market over the next couple of years. But who will actually make it to market, and after that, who will be able to service and support them? That's the big challenge for the large automakers to compete with them in turn. We're looking at things like uh, trucks and SUVs now. We uh, originally saw little cars being electric, but now there's companies like Riven with new trucks. There's new SUVs coming to the market. Is it ever endless? We're, we're going to see semis in the future? I think we're going to see all of shapes and sizes. I mean, electric cars really have to reflect the broader automotive tastes, and they don't change just because you've changed the power source. So if the broader public goes towards crossovers and SUVs and pickup trucks, so so will electric cars. So Anton, the big question is who's winning and who's losing in the electric game? Well, at this point it's too early to tell because the game is just getting started. Uh, only a handful of models are on the market now. By 2022 we'll have 200, that's, uh, let me repeat that, it's 200 pure electric vehicles on the market in the United States. And that is such a large number that by that time we won't be able to keep track of them. All right, there's a lot of information there about new cars, trucks, and SUVs that could be coming to market, and they will be electrified. Up next, Nick gets in the cockpit for the drive of his life, and we give you our take on this year's show. It all comes to you as Fox Sports presents the LA Auto Show. Welcome back. 
Well, 50 years ago, Toyota brought over its first Corollas and forever changed the auto industry. As Detroit literally scrambled for decades trying to catch up with the Corolla reliability. Fast forward to today. This is the all new 2020 Corolla, but with a twist. This Corolla is a hybrid. That's right, under the hood is a compact 1.8 liter engine, which connects with two motor generators. In other words, the motors can power the car when needed and recharge when braking. People talk about, you know, hey, why a Corolla, you know, hybrid? That vehicle right there actually gets more MPG than the original Prius, 50 miles per gallon combined, both city and highways. But it's not just that, it's the fact that it comes in this large of a size of a package. If you think about that Corolla that you're looking at, is actually the same size as one, the original Camry. Secondly, on the inside, you have the technology piece of multimedia. We call it Intune 3.0. We have Amazon Alexa and Apple CarPlay as standard equipment. And you look at this with a standard 8-inch screen. Corolla Hybrid also features Toyota's Safety Sense 2.0 as standard, including smart cruise control that speeds you up or brakes automatically in traffic. Add to that lane departure assist and lane tracing assist, both of those combined to correct the steering of the car to keep it in the middle of the lane. That's the all new 2020 Toyota Corolla Hybrid. Hey Tor, you gotta check this out. Uh, awesome segment on interactive things to do here at the Auto Show. Obviously, I uh, am in a virtual simulation doing virtual reality with Acura and Oculus on what it's like to take an NSX out on the track, but there's a lot of different things here to do at the show. Rapid fire, baby, let's go see what else there is. Stuck in a traffic jam uh, here at the LA Auto Show. So much to do and so much fun, like this brand new Step 2. This is a 2019 Step 2 with no horsepower under the hood, or in my case, dad horsepower under the hood. So while you're checking out other things here at the Auto Show that are unrelated to cars, let's talk about vehicles like this. It's actually a concept car, and it's by the folks at Infinity. Hey, we moved outside here at the LA Auto Show. It's not just about cars on carpet. It's actually about an interactive demo by the folks at Polaris. This is the three-wheeled slingshot. This guy, he's a race car driver. Tell me about the slingshot, my man. Oh, these things are awesome. Great for drifting. We'll be doing donuts, dragging the wall. Perfect for what we're doing out here at the LA Auto Show. Come by and get a drift ride. <laughs> This is the kind of interaction you get here at the LA Auto Show. This is what consumers get to do, baby. You know how much I love cars. I also love being a kid as well. And this is the best part about the auto show is challenging yourself. I feel like I'm six years old again. All right, do you guys think I can make it? A full sprint, here we go. A full sprint, all the way through, all the way through, full sprint. Gonna do it all the way. No, no, I'm not gonna do it. All right, well, that's me here. Just hanging out in the Ford booth. I'm gonna take a little rest. Well, hey guys, I've traveled about 150 miles out of LA into the deserts around Palm Springs to test drive this vehicle behind me. This is the brand new Lamborghini Urus. This vehicle is the world's first super SUV. It's of course good on track because otherwise it wouldn't be a Lamborghini, but they also tell me it's good on road and it's good off-road. So we're gonna test it in all of those three scenarios, put it through its paces. For an SUV, you look for versatility, comfort, uh, roominess, uh, infotainment. Our engineers had a lot to do to merge together these uh, things, uh, and Urus is uh, the outcome. Lifting the hood, you'll find a four-liter engine. The same family of engine is used by Audi, Bentley, and Porsche. Zero to 60, two miles an hour in about 3.6 seconds. 650 horsepower out of this four-liter Twin turbo. That is about four family sedans. This vehicle will do a top speed of 189.5 miles an hour. Inside this car, they put a gauge cluster called Tambora, and this is kind of the heart of the brand new Lamborghini Urus. They have the Enema, which is basically your different drive modes. They have Strada Street Sports, Corsa for a race course, Sambia, which is sand, Terra, which is off-road, and Nerve, which is snow. On the other side, Ego, which allows you to change how the car handles with driving and suspension, etc. Flip up the red switch, and there's your start button. You can start it. All right, let's see if we can do launch control. Alright, we're 
about to enter a big right hand sweeping turn and the whole point of this turn is so you actually don't feel the car uh, shift from side to side it's very very smooth on that right hand turn almost dizzy feeling that you're so smooth um, this is part of the whole Urus engineering to make this drive uh, very sports car like at the same time as do it in the world's first super SUV We're traveling about 20 miles an hour through this rocky, sandy canyon, and the vehicle is driving pretty much like I'm on a street. Now, here's a cool piece of information. This actually has the uh, largest and most powerful brakes in its class. 17 inch brakes with 10 pistons help you not go where you don't want to go. We've jumped off of the off-road course and now we're at Thermal, just driving the new Lamborghini Urus on the racetrack. I'm racking it over 100 miles an hour, slamming on the brakes coming into the turn here, really punishing this car as I turn the corner. But look, I'm not getting thrown around at all. I'm really tight on these corners and the, the car is holding me level. And I'm joined by my Fox Sports partners in crime here, Nick Miles and Mike Caudill. Okay, Nick, we all have Lambo envy, but we got to talk about the cars on the show floor here. So what stood out in your mind? You know, the one vehicle that I could see myself owning, and it's for multiple reasons, is the new electric truck. Rivian has done what many companies have aspired to do. They produced a truck which is both usable in the city and off-road. It's ecologically friendly. It's really the full package deal. And 400 miles on a charge. So that's, that's right. outstanding. Yeah, and I like that uh, gear tunnel. I don't think I've ever seen that kind of technology. It's so simplistic, right, to be able to put a gear tunnel in there where you can put your kiteboard or uh, your snowboard. As long as we're talking about trucks, Gladiator. Yo, man, let me tell you, that thing is going to be the ultimate off-road adventure vehicle. Now they've been able to put a truck bed in the back of it. It's the vehicle that everybody has been looking for within the Jeep brand for the past, what is it, 25, 26 years? Let's talk SUVs. Hyundai has a Palisade out. I was impressed with, with its interior. Third row seating, right? I'm six foot three, I sat in the back. I fit comfortably in the back of that vehicle. It's perfect for the marketplace. You talk about family, you have six USB ports, charging in every row. The idea of 16 cup holders, Lincoln has an Aviator. My pick, that's my pick at the show. So my favorite car is the Lincoln Aviator. I love the design of the Lincoln Aviator. And this isn't your grandpa's Lincoln, right? 3.5 liter V6. Under the hood, it's pushing out 450 horsepower on that Grand Touring Edition. Yeah, it's also electrified, which makes it a stunning vehicle. Luxury performance all in one. OK, small SUV, the Soul. You know, Soul, of course, comes in three flavors this time around much bigger now and giving you the full flavors all the way from that turbo to the electric and i know for the first time you guys will actually fit comfortably in the car because you're considerably taller than i am yeah so they stretch the wheelbase on it right and they they will also offer it in six different trim levels which gives everyone in the market an opportunity to look at that vehicle whether you want a gt that's a little bit more on the sporty side or you want to go with an ev version all right let's talk cars for a second nissan had their maxima you know, this is a JD Power & Associates top vehicle for quality. Every year that they launch a new version of the Maxima, it's more sporty and it has more performance under the hood. But I love the refinement on the interior this year. They went with this awesome baseball glove inspired interior. I love the look. Okay, then there's a Toyota Corolla Hybrid. This is the best selling car in the world, the Corolla is, right? Now they have a hybrid that gets better mileage than when the Prius originally came out. Yeah, you want to talk about an aggressive statement We're in the midst of everybody coming out with sport utility vehicles and trucks. They say, you know what, we're not only going to keep building the Corolla, now we're going to make it a hybrid with 50 miles per gallon. Come on, that's awesome technology. Well, guys, that looks like it's all the time we have. If you want to see more on these cars, join us at OurAutoExpert.com. For Nick Miles, Mike Caudill, I'm Tor Dietrich. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the road.